This is another type of anesthesia machine that could be used as a ventilator. It's from uh, GE, uh, Advanced Cs2. Their other models are quite similar. Uh, the machine has uh, electronic vape, uh, controls, vaporizers that we should always make sure they stay closed. It has, like the other anesthesia machine, an any ventilator, an inspiratory limb clearly indicated with the air, an expiratory limb. Always the expiratory limb is close to this exhaust valve. This machine has a lever for manual and mechanical ventilation. And like the other machines, it takes a while. This is the power button of the machine to turn on. The machine also has, in case of machine failure, an emergency oxygen source. It just provides oxygen uh, manually in case the controls fail and the flow meters, uh, you know, the screen goes damaged or black. You can always, uh, you know, give oxygen by turning uh, this, you know, on and then turning the oxygen on or also the liters per minute. So this is an emergency system here. Okay, there is also an oxygen flow meter. It's just not, you know, provided also from the machine. See, as I turn it on, the machines will run through a self-test and it takes a couple of minutes to uh, occur. While the screen is coming up, I'm gonna go to the back. The machine also has oxygen tanks. Oxygen tank and air and nitrous. We will not be using the nitrous anyway. And we have a key to open the tank. We always keep them closed. It also has a scavenging gas system, a purple line. And then the scavenging system of this machine is through that purple tubing. So all the exhaust gas in the machine will be to the uh, medical waste gases. Also, this machine can accumulate moisture, and this is the moisture uh, retention system. If this thing has water level down here, it should be, this level should be pressed to let the water drain. We plan to run this machine at a normal minute ventilation flow, so that should be less of an issue. Once the machine is turned on, it will give you the option of a full test, and then it will guide you through the steps. It will tell you, you know, uh, leave the, this is called the APL valve, it's a lever anyway. And it gives you an idea between manual and mechanical ventilation. You put it in mechanical. It tells you exactly what to do, you know, on or disconnect the circuit as it is, disconnect it, and then just start the system check. And this runs for a few seconds. I'll pause here. Initial set is three steps on this setup. Now it's uh, asked to connect the breathing circuit or, or occlude the limb. So in the machine you have this area that you can actually connect it to. Make it tight enough, but not that tight you'll break it. So remember it's all plastic. And then you press continue. And now you have another two minutes of uh, different areas being checked in the machine. I'll pause the video here. Once that second phase is checked now, the manual checking has to occur. So you can see this is a relatively long test and the valve has to set up between 30 and 70. So this valve here in between. And then again, press start. Another minute. So this machine takes uh, easily five minutes. Once the test is done, we're gonna have controls uh, down here and we'll be able to actually ventilate the patient. I'll put this in processing. Testing is done, it will tell you how it passed and all that, and then you can start the case. The bag will be a little inflated like that, and that's completely normal. We can start a case, and you can again press start a case. And I'm gonna, of course, now we can connect our patient to the lung, or test lung. And then we can select the mode of ventilation now. To ventilate, you always have to move this lever from manual where it was to control ventilation. It doesn't matter, but it's always good to leave it open. It's good practice. It is all open. And now we're going to start ventilating at this set tidal volume, this respiratory rate, the EIA, EIA ratio, uh, inspiratory pulse, and PEEP, and all that you can set up. Again, press 
and you can turn, and you can confirm. Um, these buttons, if they fail, by sometimes the screen when it gets clean or wiped, fails, you can actually always move the, the wheel and then set up, you press, and you can change your parameter and then press again. Or you can again manually press and move whatever way you want. But sometimes again, once you wipe it, sometimes that's the response and it goes away. To be careful that this thing, if you lock it, be a lock sign up here and you won't be able to do anything. So that's important to know. It's good also a way to keep your screen uh, locked so to prevent accidental, you know, pushing or anything like that. Um, yes, I think, uh, yeah, and you're gonna unlock the button. So there's no codes or anything to press into it. Now this has also CO2 monitoring that you will have from the sampling line, which in this case is not connected. I have to connect it. It goes from this port to back there. So I forgot to connect it when I set up the circuit. So from here to there, the sampling, and you will have a CO2 iconography display. Ideally, we're going to ventilate the patients to their minute ventilation requirements so you can adjust their flows to whatever liters per minute you have calculated doing the math here. You know, if you do, you know, six liters times, that was just 600 times 10, you know it's six liters, but you would need. Again, if you go a little below, it won't be a problem because this machine also circulates the gases and the CO2 will be neutralized or by that CO2 neutralizer or absorber. The problem is then when this exhausts, then the CO2 will be re-inhaled. And so it's better as used as an ICU vent to do the calculation of the minute ventilation and set it up at the minute ventilation rate and then the fio2 of course you can change to whatever you want if you press this gas setup it's the option that will give you select from air or nitrous you try not to touch this leave that in air and then you can do this as a non-circle uh, uh, circuit that means it will exclude the co2 absorber just don't don't touch that just leave it as it is and uh, that's pretty much it there are alarms in, in every machine. It's always good to set up the alarms like any other ventilator, your minimum and your maximums. And uh, that's always, uh, I think, useful uh, to do. Uh, be careful, you know, if you press end case, the machine is going to tell you end case. So you have to confirm. You can always just, of course, back up. Um, if you end the case by mistake, and if you're ventilating you by mistake, yeah, this uh, low fire too, it's complaining. If you end the case by mistake, the machine doesn't allow you because you're in mechanical ventilation. So that's a safety feature to prevent you from uh, doing that. Okay. And then this is just the Inspire Oxygen, but it's just reading low because we are not sampling, it's sampling from room air here. That's why it's reading 20%. Okay. And you can see the level of the alarms.